I was just out in the laboratory again working on some new products. We've got some great new things coming. But anyway, I just particularly came out to talk to you about mixing and getting things right when you do your mixing of all of our products. Um, we get a lot of uh, inquiries about why do we get stickiness when I've done, I've done everything properly according to the instructions and yet it's still sticky. Well, actually, there's a little bit of subtleness in those instructions. They talk of having, in the mixing section, a straight-sided vessel with a flat bottom and a mixing stick that similarly is a bit like an old-school ruler. And the reason being is, the, if, if you can see there, we've got a right angle meeting the right angle corner of the container. And the idea is that you're getting all those materials in there, and when you're doing your blending, which should be for a couple of minutes or so, uh, it, it gives the mixing time on the instructions though. Polyurethanes are a little bit shorter. Do your mixing so that you bring everything in. Do this occasionally, just clean the stick off and then remix, etc. But it's, it will work. It's all down to that square edge, one mixing stick meeting, one mixing vessel. Now, these are all good examples. Readily available at the hardware store. I've just found out recently this type of bucket. But try and make your mixing vessel in proportion to the size of your mix. So if you're mixing a litre, have something that's maybe two litres, so you've got plenty of splash zone that you're not trying to carefully mix and not spill it. You want to be able to really do that figure eight swirling, etc. Um, mixing sticks, this is perfect. And you'd think, oh, I'll use a, for a little job, as I said, using the right size container, it's how I'll get a little stick. Well. An icy pole stick's okay to a degree. You've got to cut the end off. Remember, we're trying to get a flat side and a flat bottom meeting the flat bottom of the vessel. So remember to cut the ends off. Now we've actually put together examples of what we've found people have um, been caught out with in that they've found this is a nice shape, they've thought, but the bottom's all too busy. It can't get, it, nothing can get in there and mix all that busy base on that soft drink bottle. A jar's another one that's a trap. It's straight sided and flat floor, but look, you, you can't get to the sides properly because you've got that um, collar coming in on the neck of the jar. These are all no-nos for mixing. Anything that's round, as I've just said, a dowel is no good, and um, screwdrivers, pencils. Spoons aren't any good because look at the curvature, it doesn't match to your straight sided vessel. And the other side of the thing is you get vessels with curved corners. We've all seen the ice cream container. That's so tempting, it's handy, but again, there's no way you'll get into those corners properly. And lastly, something like this being square too. It's, it, it just doesn't work well for mixing. And what's all this mean? Well, it, you won't get a solid solution, so to speak. You'll get something like this piece of resin art if you don't have everything blended in, as we've talked. You will get mi a mixture, even if you mix uh, uh, for a few, for well, you know, half, half the mixing time, some will mix. You get a lovely dr dry result. But if you were to use one of these vessels here, when you pour out your material onto the job, towards the end, it'll drain out the material that's in that curved corner that we talked about, that's caught, that hasn't been blended, whether it's up here or down the base like in the, these curved areas. It will come out on the job and dry here, but look, you'll end up with a zone where that dropped out and it's very tacky. So that's the message for now. Just right si side, side proportionate vessel to the mixture you're using, straight size flat bottom, matching stick for mixing. And you'll always come out with a solid solution. Thanks for that. Catch you again. Thank you.